Having users enter dates is as simple as binding an at state property of type date to a date picker Swift UI control, but things get a little bit woollier afterwards. You see, working with dates is hard, like really hard, way harder than you think, way harder than I think, and I've been working with dates for years. Take a look at this trivial example. Let now equals date. Let tomorrow equals date dot adding time interval 86,400. Let range equals now through tomorrow. That creates a range from now, because date's the current date, to the same time tomorrow. 86,400 is the number of seconds in a day. That might seem easy enough, but do all days have 86,400 seconds? If they did, a lot of people would be out of jobs. Think about daylight savings time. Sometimes clocks go forward, losing an hour, and sometimes go backwards, gaining an hour, meaning that we might have 23 or 25 hours in those days. Then there are leap seconds, times that get added to the clocks in order to adjust for the Earth's slowing rotation. If you think that's hard, try running this command from your Mac's terminal, cal. This prints a simple calendar for the current month, showing you the days of the week. Now try running cal 9 1752, which shows you the calendar for September 1752. You'll notice 12 whole days are missing, thanks to the calendar moving from Julian to Gregorian. Now the reason I'm saying all this isn't to scare you off. Dates are inevitable in our programs after all. Instead, I want you to understand that for anything significant, any use of dates that actually matters in our code, we should rely on Apple's frameworks for calculations and formatting. In the project we're making, we'll be using dates in three ways. First, choosing a sensible default wake-up time. Second, reading the hour and minute they want to wake up. And third, showing their suggested bedtime neatly formatted. We could, if we wanted, do all that by hand, but then you're into the realm of daylight savings, leap seconds, and Gregorian calendars. Much better is to have iOS do all that hard work for us. It's much less work, and it's guaranteed to be correct, regardless of the user's region settings. Let's tackle each of those individually, starting with choosing a sensible wake-up time. As you've seen, Swift gives us date for working with dates, and that encapsulates the year, month, date, hour, minutes, second, time zone, and more. However, we don't want to think about most of that. We want to say, give me an 8 a.m. wake-up time, regardless of what day it is today. Swift has a slightly different type for that purpose, called date components, which lets us read or write specific parts of a date rather than the whole thing. So if we wanted a date that represented 8 a.m. today, we could write code like this. var components equals date components, components.hour equals 8, components.minute equals 0, let date equals calendar.current dot date from components. Now because of difficulties around date validation, that date from method actually returns an optional date. So it's a good idea to use nil coalescing to say, if that fails, just give me back the current date like this. Question mark, question mark, date. The second challenge is how we could read the hour they wanted to wake up. Remember, date picker is bound to a date, giving us lots of information. So we need to find a way to pull out just the hour and minute components. Again, date components comes to the rescue. We can ask iOS to provide specific components from a date, then read those back out. One hiccup is that there's a disconnect between the values we request and the values we get, thanks to the way date components works. We can ask for the hour and minute, but we'll be handed back a date components instance with optional values for all its properties. Yes, we know our minute will be there because those are the ones we asked for, but we still need to unwrap the optionals or provide default values. So we might write code like this. Let components equals calendar.current.dateComponents an array of dot hour dot minute from some sort of date. Let hour equals components.hour nil coalescing zero. Let minute equals components.minute nil coalescing zero. The last challenge is how we can format dates and times. And once again, Swift gives us a specific type to do most of the work for us. This time it's called date formatter, and it lets us convert a date into a string in a variety of ways. For example, if we just wanted the time from a date, we would write this. Let formatter equals date formatter, 
formatter.timestyle equals dot short. Let date string equals formatter dot string from date. We could also set dot date style to get date values and even pass in an entirely custom format using date format. But that's way out of the remit of this project. The point is that dates are hard, but Apple has provided us with stacks of helpers to make them less hard. If you learn to use them well, you'll write less code and write better code too.